Hey everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace. I had to stop my little music intros in the, in the vehicle because they were flagging me for copyrights, uh, which is no big deal because all they do is they uh, get to snatch uh, any ad monetization I do on the channel. So I ain't got the pennies to be given away like that. So I uh, have to find another way to do something creative. I was kind of liking it. But anyway, uh, Delia Johnson, um, and you may be wondering why that name is of importance. Uh, I believe every person should be treated with importance. I think every person's life is important. Uh, but I'm, I'm mentioning Delia because she's the representation, unfortunately, of a terrible reality that we need to confront in the black community. I don't want to hear about what's going on in other communities. I've written on uh, the black on black crime myth. I've written on all that other stuff that shows that other communities deal with violence, other communities uh, commit fr fratricide and a bunch of other things. I understand that. My thing is I'm not concerned about other community. communities. I'm concerned about the black community and the state of affairs within the black community and what we see. Delia Johnson is a 42 year old mother in uh, the city of New York. I want to say Brooklyn, uh, out of Brooklyn. I could be wrong, but I think she's a, out of Brooklyn. And she was literally lured to a public place, which is crazy, a public place where she was holding conversation with people. Maybe she knew him, maybe she didn't, but it seemed like she was having friendly conversation with someone and a person she knew walked up behind her. It's on video. Uh, and obviously I'm not showing it, uh, but walked up behind her and shot her in the head. And as she fell to the ground, shot her again twice and walked away. Uh, I'm pretty sure by now they have the person in custody. Um, at the time I first found out about it, I it wasn't clear whether they, she was in custody or not, but, but, but being that everybody knows who she was, she was, here's the thing, family friend had literally lived in this woman's house under her mother's roof and they were friends forever and all of a sudden they got into some disagreements and they were, were not on the same page. Nobody knows the full extent of it, but she lured her to an open place in public where there were like a lot of people around. When you see the, I didn't watch the video, but I saw the steel shot and where she's walking up on her and literally like two feet away from her. And it's people all around. She's got her back turned talking to people. It's, she, the person walks past people to get to her. And this is another black life loss. Not, not at the hands of a white police officer. Not at the hand of some racist uh, person uh, full of hatred, but at the hands of another black person. We need to deal with the elephant in the room. We need to deal with it and we need to deal with it quickly. Uh, this is what's happening. And then when I talk about proper socialization, of our youth, when I talk about the development and treatment of trauma, when I talk about all the things that I literally um, excel at and uh, have spent years mastering, you know, it's crickets. It's not, you know, it's like, oh, that's great, it's awesome, you you know, but nobody is sitting up understanding the depth of what's happening. Our people are killing themselves. I'm saying, baby, she's not that much younger than me. I, what? Um, 12 years younger than me so she's not really a baby but listening to her mom I read the mom's interviews and I saw the video of the mom to her mom she was her baby and the thing is she, the mom had so much love because she had put so much into this other person she was still calling her her baby and she was saying why couldn't you come to, to me and I would have fixed it with the both of you why did you take my baby and you know, the thing is that conversation, that question is being asked far too often in the black community. Uh, death has become so much of our culture that it's second nature and we have become desensitized to it. It's almost an automatic response to any disagreement 
uh, 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 any level of disrespect, we, we, we respond with ultimate violence. Uh, we do it uh, domestically. We do it in the community. We do it man on man, man on woman, woman on man, woman on woman. And it has to stop. We have to at some point reclaim our humanity. We have to at some point decide that we're gonna live at the level we were designed to live at and not at the level we've been pushed to. We can talk about all the mechanisms and machinations and, and ins and outs of institutional racism, uh, the history of hatred and, 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 and genocide in this country. We could talk about a whole lot of other things, but you know me and you know one of my favorite quotes is the African proverb, if there's no enemy within, the enemy on the outside can do us no harm. We are vulnerable to the external and exogenous forces that we face because we're so disrupted and, 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 and off balance within ourselves. We don't have enough self-love to look at someone who looks like us and see the value in that life. And we are going to have to start developing in that and very at a very young age in our children. The And I mean, think about it. Everything is desensitizing us to violence on ourselves, you know, to where we are actually committing these violent acts against one another. And it's and it's everything that we, we, I talked about that earlier when we were talking about the baby and the music and and how it's programming our children to be counterproductive. This is just another way. Desensitize violence, desensitize death, make it just a thing. When you start to devalue the life that you own because you don't see value, it's gonna be easy to devalue the life of the next person and then the cycle starts. And there's seemingly no end. We owe it to ourselves to be better. I'm not saying let somebody walk over you. I'm not saying be a push up. I'm definitely not saying let somebody harm you. I'm saying when there's something going on, if you can walk away and think about it, your future is going to be better. Yes, you're going to save a life, but your future is going to be better. And you're going to stop pain from flowing through that community from both families because your family is going to suffer because you're taking away. Their family is going to suffer because they're gone forever. And there's a hole that can't be filled because that community need that hole plugged by the two people who were taken out of it. There's a, there's a spiritual cycle, an emotional cycle that goes on in communities and in collectives. And every time that, that that cycle is broken and interrupted, it creates friction and upheaval. And it's a part of the devastation that we're experiencing at the hands of others because we are participating in it. They want us to kill ourselves. They want us to harm ourselves. We have to be the ones to say, no, we're going to live. We're going to live together. We're going to live in power. We're going to live in anticipation of a better time. We can't do that if we're killing one another. I mean, just imagine you're standing up there talking and your life is gone without you ever even knowing that it was coming. We've got to do better. We've got to do better. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. You know the drill. Show love and show support for the work we do at the Odyssey Project. I'm out of here.